So a new resource for foreigners living in Japan, looking for support for things like life, work and law, opened in Tokyo earlier in July. The Foreign Residence Support Center, or FRESC as it's abbreviated, opened near Yotsuya Station in Tokyo's Shinjuku Ward, and it's in that building just behind me there. The centre gathers together the offices of eight public service agencies on a single floor of the Komore Yotsuya or Yotsuya Tower building, which is just right across the corner from Yotsuya Station. The agencies are as follows, the Immigration Services Agency of Japan, Tokyo Regional Immigration Services Bureau, Tokyo Legal Affairs Bureau, Human Rights Department, the Japan Legal Support Center, the Japan External Trade Organization, uh, MOFA Visa Information, Tokyo Labor Bureau Consultation and Support Office for Foreigners, and the Tokyo Employment Service Center for Foreigners. So, if you're a foreigner living in Japan and you're seeking consultation regarding legal issues, visa issues, labor matters, among other things, then perhaps a visit to Fresk might be worth your while. The center has private consultation rooms and remote interpretation is available, according to the reports, uh, in a number of languages. And the center is open from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. on weekdays. Now, given the uh, situation with outbreak of the coronavirus, it might be worth calling in advance to see if it's okay to just rock up at Fresk without an appointment. They might not be in the mood to encourage great numbers of people to come and visit them, you know, obviously given the circumstances. The opening of Fresk comes on the back of increased efforts by the Japanese government to encourage foreigners to live and work in the country as it looks to address a labour shortage, the result of an ageing and declining population. The government launched a new visa scheme in April last year and under the new scheme they offer visas for foreign workers with specified skills. And to qualify, applicants must pass a skills exam and a Japanese language test or have gone through the country's technical intern training program for at least three years. However, the new scheme seems to have gotten off to a slow start with reports earlier in the year stating that as of the end of March, just shy of 4,000 foreigners were living in Japan under the new visas. So that's far less than the up to 47,550 foreigners the government had expected to receive in the first year of its introduction. Vietnamese accounted for the biggest proportion of the total in fiscal 2019 with 2,316 visa holders, followed by 456 Indonesians and 331 Chinese. Most of those were based in Aichi, Chiba and Tokyo, again according to news reports. According to the Justice Ministry, which runs the new Fresk Centre, a record 2.93 million foreign nationals resided in Japan as of December 2019. In the description of this video, we'll stick a link for a list of other support centres across Japan for foreigners living in the country, which we found on the homepage of the Justice Ministry itself. So anyway, we went inside to the Fresk facility to check things out a little bit. It was all very shiny and new and it was very friendly in there as well. Uh, there were also one or two foreigners in there getting consultations when we visited. Um, I feel like uh, you know, these places, they have uh, well-intentioned, I think. But if I've got a problem with these kind of things is that they're a bit sort of formal. It seems to me that if you're going to open such a new facility, then you could perhaps make it a little bit more casual and a bit more inviting rather than sticking it on the 13th floor of some office building, which makes it really kind of hard to enter. Uh, and that's a shame, I think, because there are foreigners, obviously, in Japan looking for support, looking for advice. And I think that you could make that, you know, through facilities like this, you could make it easier for them to get that. And you could make it more inviting. You know, let's serve some coffee in there. Let's have a bit more communal space. Let's have some books, magazines, newspapers, that kind of thing. In 10, 20 years time, Fresk is probably going to look like the sorry interior of a city hall that we have to visit to do some bureaucracy that we don't want to do. Uh, so I feel like they've missed out on an opportunity a little bit here. But obviously it's only just opened, it's early days and they're offering the support that foreigners need, so that's great. Anyway, um, whilst the, uh, a centre like this is perhaps not reasoning enough solely to come to a place like Yotsia, uh, fortunately the person operating the camera knows what's going on in Yotsia, so after we visited the centre, we had a bit of a walk around and took in some of the sites. Check them out here. Now Yotsuya, despite being in Shinjuku Ward, feels a long way from the booming chaos of the Shinjuku Station area. But it does have its own district of watering holes and post-work eateries, Shinmichi Street. This is like the Yotsuya nightlife zone. 
into an area of sort of tight bars and stuff, lots of karaoke joints. But as you see, I've got my mask on. Maybe now's not the best time to be enjoying Tokyo's nightlife, I don't know. At the end of Shinmichi, we stopped by Shinoda Zushi to pick up a lunch box of Sukeroku Zushi, which contained Inari Zushi, that's juicy deep fried tofu stuffed with rice, and Kampyo Maki, kind of sushi rolls filled with strips of dried gourd. If you just want something to snack on though, you'd better try the taiyaki at Taiyaki Wakaba, south of Shinmichi, the other side of the busy Shinjuku Dori. I've been told that this taiyaki shop is proper delicious. It's a bit famous in Yotsuya. So we're going to go over here and get some taiyaki. Now, it's probably taken this expat over a decade to get a taste for anko, the red bean paste that often makes for a nasty surprise hiding inside some otherwise delicious looking baked good. I'm fine with it now though, which is good, because there's plenty of it in the taiyaki at Taiyaki Wakaba, which, according to their homepage, operates on the philosophy of always making sure there's anko in the taiyaki right up into the tail, or something like that. Our filmer reckons Yotsuya is a great place to live and work, and certainly the quiet residential streets west of Yotsuya Station seemed to me at least to be a chilled out spot to settle, although one that's probably way above my price range. Somewhere around here is that set of stairs from the anime Your Name, or Kimi no Nawa in Japanese. We gave them in this though because, well, they've probably been instabied enough by now, and anyway, I haven't even seen the anime. There are plenty of other steps and steep slopes, or zaka, in the area though. I just walked all up those stairs for nothing. The area west of Yotsuya Station is known as Teramachi, or Temple Town, on accounts of there being, well, a lot of temples in the area. According to some sources, during the early to mid-17th century, many of these temples were forcibly relocated to Yotsuya from Kojimachi due to the construction of the Edo Castle Outer Moat. It's in amongst these temples then that you'll find the grave of Hattori Hanzo. So this here is the grave of Hattori Hanzo, who was uh, one of the top generals of the Tokugawa shogunate, uh, Tokugawa Ieyasu. According to some signage in front of his grave, Hanzo was ordered to assist in the ritual suicide of Ieyasu's eldest son, as you do. Hanzo, though, was unable to perform his role, understandably, and went on to become a Buddhist priest, which is a stark contrast to Hattori Hanzo's reputation as a legendary ninja. His grave is here at the quiet Sainenji Temple. An iron spear used by Hanzo is among the temple treasures and can be viewed from outside. Further west of Sainenji Temple and a short walk south of Yotsuya Sanchome Station is Yonji Temple, or Yonji Oiwa Inari Temple. It's a beautiful spot, even if it wasn't the place we were looking for. We were actually headed for Tamaya Inari Jinja, or formerly Oiwa Inari Jinja, famous for enshrining one of the protagonists, Oiwa, in arguably Japan's most celebrated ghost story, Yotsuya Kaidan. Yonji Temple is a cool and leafy spot, and on its website also claims to be the place where Oiwa is enshrined. Confused? So was I. Anyway. Tamiya Inari Jinja is just across the street, so it's easy to visit both and have all bases covered. At Yonji Temple, you can find Omamori to cover all manner of woes and desires. Alright, so in Yotsuya I've been told to eat uh, this uh, Kampyo Maki and Oinari san. So let's check it out and see what we've got. This is the Oinari san. <laughs> Oh, good. I'm going to juice your food. Come to the Oh, it's more for a new guy, man. If you're wanting to overnight it in Yotsuya, consider the state guest house Akasaka Palace, where free overnight stays are available if you happen to be a visiting head of state. Okay. So it looks like we'll have to make do with a stroll around some of the grounds for a small fee instead. If you enjoyed this video, please click on that thumbs up button. 
subscribe to the City Coast YouTube channel where you can find more videos about life in Japan. Click on the bell for updates and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.